Well, happy day, guys. Welcome to another show, another episode of Snap Political. What's going on, guys? I hope you have really been diving into this content, educating yourself, and all the good stuff for researching for your own. But before we go any further, guys, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel, share the video. Let's get this video up to 100 likes. Let's go. And turn on that bell so every time I drop a video, you will get it. All right, guys, I got some heat. I've been doing some homework. I've been digging. I've been paying attention. I've been reading. I've been educating myself. Hopefully, you're doing the same thing. But let's get right on into this because what's been going on with um, President Trump is just outrageous. It really is. I, I can't. I can't even begin to say how how this how crazy this is. Come on now, here. I can't. I can't. You all know. I've been saying on all my, my videos. This is really crazy. Let's tap into this. But see what they don't realize is how this is going to backfire on them because God don't like ugly. Let's go. The federal judge overseeing former President Trump's election interference case setting a trial date for March 4th of next year. Crazy. Now, the timing puts the trial directly so in the fast. middle of the Republican presidential primaries mm -hmm. with Super Tuesday slated for the very next day. Mark Levin is host of Life, Liberty, and Levin. And we've got this chart, uh, Mark, that we can show everybody when these dates are. When we first heard the, the date of March 4th yesterday, I think people who are politically minded thought, isn't that right around Super Tuesday? Turns out, Mark, it's the day yeah. before. The day before Super Tuesday, guys, come on, let's go. You already know what it is. Don't you see what's happening here? The day before Super Tuesday of all of all days. That's not right. So you're a federal judge and you're sitting there and you're saying to yourself, what date can I set that would not interfere with the election, <laughs> that would allow the defendant to actually defend himself? And you That would not interfere. Pick March 4th, six months from now, in a case that involves 12 million documents, scores of witnesses, what? where he can't possibly have effective representation, and I'm sure there'll be an appeal based on that, but yes. you have to wait for the trial. But a couple of things. This judge not only set March 4th, Judge Chunkin, who, by the way, whose father, excuse me, grandfather in Jamaica was actually a Marxist. This is in the New York Post today. Okay, so let's just be clear. He's talking about the grandfather of the judge was a Marxist. So that's real close. That's not like where well, your great, 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 great. That's your granddad. Okay. Just highlighting some things so your spidey senses and these little antennas in your brains can kick on, can kick in. Come on now. And was imprisoned by the Jamaican government for a period of time. Chip off the old shoulder there. Anyway. I just want to say that. There's something called the anti-suit injunction, and it's to deal with a situation like this. The Department of Justice under Biden and Jack Smith decided that they were going to bring essentially two federal cases so close to each other that Donald Trump wouldn't have the ability to defend himself. And they've moved for early trials in both cases. They moved for January trial in, in uh, D.C. They moved for a January, February trial, or maybe it was March, in Florida. You're talking about tens of millions of pages of documents and so forth. So they're piling on. They're trying to smother him. So I would file a motion for, under the uh, anti-suit injunction. The anti-suit injunction is for a case like this. When you have the Department of Justice, the Biden administration, piling on cases, piling on charges against a single defendant, and it's supposed to be tried within months of each other, the judge in Florida set the date for May. Now this judge in D.C. blowing off the judge in Florida. She should have waited in D.C. till the first trial was done and the first case was done if she had any, any desire to show uh, due process rights to the defendant, but she jumped the other judge. That's the second case. So that's how important this issue is. It's bigger than even March 4th. So the motion should be filed with Judge Cannon in Florida, the first judge, and that motion should say, look, we can't have two trials at the same time overlapping each other with tens of millions of pages of document with a presidential candidate who cannot defend his liberty at the same time run for president. And the Department of Justice scheduled it this way intentionally. Right. So let's just stop right there because it's a mouthful. And we got lots to say about this. Okay. So not only are they doing this in a way that's really janky, they're not even giving him an opportunity to prepare properly to defend himself. So you would think that the people who are our judges would, who have 
supposedly a higher level thinking, meaning that they have been done the training, they went to school, they got all the information, so and ethics and all this this stuff right here that is going to allow them to really be non-biased because technically you're not supposed to be biased in these roles that you would really have a humanistic standpoint you would be thinking from a human standpoint of whether about how you feel about Trump is okay is this fair is this just is he going to be able to properly say his whole spiel defend himself his team and everything they don't but see they don't care and that is the problem that is the problem let's go and the judge in D.C. jumped the line, she's the second case, not the first, in order to get her case before your case, and for whatever reason, that's mm -hmm. what she did. So the Anti-Injunction Act would be Judge Cannon issuing an order against Jack Smith and the Department of Justice telling them to cease the prosecution of the case in D.C. until the case in Florida is mm. completed. Yeah. And that's the way it should be. Because it's hard enough to defend against one case as opposed to two cases, or in Trump's case, four cases. Now, I want to mention also grand juries. Nobody has talked about this to my amazement. The grand jury process is set up in the Fifth Amendment. It's in the Bill of Rights. You are to be indicted by a grand jury, not a prosecutor. Well, what happened when Jack Smith moved his charges from Washington, D.C. Hmm. to Florida? He was in the wrong venue in violation of Department of Justice. Okay, so let's just dive in. And this really, really, really makes me want to dive in to criminal law. It really does. Because when you clearly can see how he's being treated, and this, is, this has a lot to do with, you know, how black people have felt over the course of the years. Let's just be real. They have felt, we have felt this same way when it comes to how that, how the country has treated us when it comes to laws. Now, so many things have changed and are still changing. But now when you see President Trump, a former U.S. president, experiencing much of the same injustice and unfair treatment, defame of character, lies, slander, you have to really step back, people, and look at our justice system. Come on. For you to continue to erase what's going on or make this out to be an agenda based off of your misunderstanding, your lack of willingness to want to accept the truth as facts, come on. This is playing right here. So I, went, I stopped here because I wanted to tap in to, he mentioned first, the... Um, the anti-suit injunction that's what he said so so what does that actually mean because it's a on on snap politicals the show that i've started and it's about education not just looking at these videos and understand we need to dig deeper so we can get a clear understanding from other resources so we can get a clear understanding from other resources now, many people I've seen in my comments where someone mentioned about Fox News not being child pleased. I, I know you ain't trying to, to so what's your resource? Because this person in the comments section failed to give a reputable resource, but they want to throw Fox News under the bus. Please, please come with a right-leaning um, perspective or a non-biased perspective. I'm truly open for that. But who who, who you got? What you, what you got to say about that? Who? CNN? Child. MSNBC? <laughs> your local news? Okay. Anyway. Let's get back on point. Anti-junction, anti-suit injunction in the area of conflict of laws an anti-suit injunction is an order issued by a court or arbitral tribunal that prevents an opposing party from commencing or continuing a proceeding in another jurisdiction or forum. And that's what he's explaining. He's saying that he he so not only does he have four. So this is, I guess, four different trials because there are four different indictments in other states. So while the, his team is having to prepare for all of these things pretty much intermittently, which they shouldn't have to be doing, it should be one at a time, they're not giving them the proper time to prepare. 
that prevents an opposing party from commencing or continuing a proceeding in another jurisdiction. That's what that's what's going on. If the opposing party contravenes such an order issued by a court, a contempt of court order may be issued by the domestic court against that party. I'm not going to keep going on. You guys can look this up for yourself. But and on the right, this is in Wikipedia. I looked at some other resources, but this is the easiest way for us to understand it. So it's valid enough to give you a general breakdown and other links that you could also follow into other resources. But I think Wikipedia is a good source for the mere fact that it breaks it down for your average layman and it gives you a general broad um, overview of what these things mean. Should it be your only resource? Absolutely not. It is a starting point. Conflict of laws and private international law. That's a whole nother column over here. And he talked about the grand jury. Now, I didn't even know that there were different types of grand juries. This is so interesting to me, y'all. And honestly, I really am feeling really, really led to tap into this other side. So I'm going to just hold up on that and not say any more. But a criminal grand, this is talking about a criminal grand jury. A criminal grand jury is used by the prosecution as an alternative to a pre preliminary hearing. So I'm only going to read a couple of paragraphs, but I just want us to get a little bit of meaning to some of the things that he's saying, those of us who are not versed in law. But your girl interested now. Come on. OK, the criminal grand jury is selected periodically by the presiding judge of the court. 19 grand jurors and three alternates, three alternates are chosen and are required to serve for a maximum of six indictment hearings or one fiscal year, whichever comes first. Jurors are assigned to the criminal grand jury through random selection. Its members are drawn from the same master jury pool as those selected for criminal and civil jury trials, i.e. the petite jury system. All right. Criminal grand jury proceedings require the attendance of at least 12 members as an indictment will not issue unless 12 juries vote for it. The hearing consists of the district attorney, attorney general, bringing in witnesses who will provide relevant testimony. And this is where it's starting to get a little sketchy to me because they are not only having this, um, the trials in states that are none in favor of, of Trump. They are also, so how you think they're going to select the jury pool? Because remember, they got to select these people. But it's supposed to be under a fair and due process. He said that the jurors are supposed to be made aware of, uh, aware of laws and all types of things. Are they really getting that? The only non-jurors who may attend are the district attorney or attorney general staff pre presenting the case. A court reporter who makes a record of the proceedings, the witnesses who are subpoenaed, and an interpreter if necessary. After hearing the evidence and after being instructed on the law pertaining to the case, okay, the grand jury then deliberates with no one else present if there is an affirmative vote of at least 12 members and indictment is issued. So I'm going to stop there. If, if we're going to do this, we need to do it right. And it needs to be fair. If there has a law that's been broken, then it needs to be found and it needs to be done in a way that is fair and just and him to prove himself innocent and not be proven guilty. But that's one big thing in this country that, that I have just really, you know, deterred. It's not innocent until proven guilty. They, they want to deem you guilty and you've got to prove yourself innocent. That's how it's been in this country. And we all know that. And that's just across the board. So let's tap in. I just want to get some education about it because it's, it's not just about just pu pumping up these videos. I'm learning along with you guys. And one last thing I almost forgot. He talked about the Fifth Amendment. And I printed this out long right when uh, Sibo and, and I were learning and probably in the midst of changing our, changing our party if we had not already changed our party. But um I wanted to know because many of us don't even know what our constitutional rights are. We vote for these politicians and yet we, we go back. We, we are completely relying on their word without seeing what it says. So he says the Fifth Amendment is talking about this grand jury and this due process. No person. So this is the Fifth Amendment. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising in the land or naval forces or in the militia, when in actual service in time of war or public danger. Nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb 
nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without the due process of law. Is he getting the due process? Nor shall private property be taken from public use without just compensation. So I know, guys, you know, some of the words in there you have to kind of, but, you know, put break it down, go back and read it for yourself. But the key word here is due process. Come on. But he gets his indictments, then he moves them to the grand jury in Florida. Now the grand jury in Florida indicts. Okay. But a grand jury's indictment is not supposed to be a rubber stamp of something that happened in a grand jury in another jurisdiction. What exactly did that grand jury vote on? Did they ask for witnesses? Hmm. Did they ask for any documents? I mean, okay. that, this investigation of Washington has been going on two and a half years. There's piles of information. And in one week's time, they, they uh, indict the president in Florida on top of the indictment in D.C. Right. I think that's fast and loose. I think uh, Mr. Smith... Uh, actually uh, violated the grand jury rules in Florida. And again, I would file a motion of grand jury abuses, and I'd want to know exactly what they told that grand jury, because uh, they, they're supposed to be truthful. They're supposed to present facts. They're supposed yeah. to explain the law. They're supposed Due to process. ask them if they want to talk to any witnesses, Due scrutinize process. any documents. I yeah. doubt that happened for Historically, the most part. And in Due Georgia, process. yeah. Historically, though, just Mark, say, it's pretty Georgia, tough they to have get... A huge problem. It's tough to get uh, grand jury... What, what they saw, what they heard, that interaction, isn't it tough to get usually? It's tough to be a defendant in any case when you're up against the government. Mm, All your motions you heard that, didn't are you? difficult to pursue. But this is unique. The circumstances are actually quite unbelievable. Why did he bring the indictments in Washington, D.C.? That's not supposed to happen. When the material activities and events being charged occurred in Florida, so there's more basis for getting behind what took place in this case with grand jury abuses than there would be normally. That is, the government opened itself up. It doesn't have a good explanation for why it did that. None. Can uh, One more thing Georgia, for me. Let me just ask you this, Mark. Yeah, it, it, right ahead. This sets up for, it seems, like a lot of issues on appeal. But because these are happening real time during an election, is there a fast track process that somehow the appellate or the Supreme Court gets involved earlier? The motion for the anti-suit injunction uh, can be appealed if it's ruled against uh, the president and the other co-defendants immediately, because it is a, it is a, a issue about the trial itself. So you can't go through the whole trial and then go back and say, and by the way, uh, you should have issued an order to stop the other trial. Mm. Judge Trumpkin in D.C. has pushed up the date to March 4th. So this is an immediate issue. It's a pre-trial issue, mm -hmm. and it is an issue. We don't call this interlocutory appeal, but it can be immediately appealed to the circuit. In terms of the grand jury abuses, the Supreme Court has ruled. You so, Bob, I mean, look, y'all, look at all these things that they are abusing. Look at all these things that they're breaking and how they just slide stuff in. Come on. His lawyers have so much work. It's almost impossible. It's almost impossible. How are they going to get their witnesses? How are they going to be able to corroborate and get the information information, and facts? Man, this is just absolutely unfair. So this is not justice. This is not justice. Y'all see exactly what's going on here. But I know he got some smart people on his team that really are supporting him, and that's going to really, really help prove him innocent. You need to lay that out before a trial. If you mm. lay it out during or after the trial, you have no basis for raising it at all. So you have to raise it now. So that provides a basis also for what we call an interlocutory appeal immediately to the circuit court if the president and the defendants don't get the result that they want. So both of these cases would go to appeal, if necessary, before the commencement of a full trial, to answer mm. that question. And by the way, real quickly, I know you're, we're out of time. In Georgia, when they posted the grand jury indictments, before the grand jury came to the courthouse, before they met, before they voted, and in Georgia, you don't have to use a grand jury, but when you do, you got to use it properly. Mm -hmm. That is a perfect case for grand jury abuse. And since in Georgia, there are no secrecy rules, as we know, uh, it would be easy for defense counsel to find out what the hell took place in that grand jury. So... These are things that can be done 
because there's no question that the Department of Justice has abused law, the law. They're piling on the charges. There's no question that the judge in D.C. is a partisan, one of the most radical judges in the federal bench of all the thousand district court judges. And there are ways to at least seek relief, even if they're tough. Mm -hmm. You don't roll over and play dead because mm -hmm. what the American people are seeing here is an abuse of the justice system and judges, at least the judge in D.C., the judge in Manhattan, and we'll see about Georgia, are going along with it. In other mm -hmm. words, they're allowing their Best courtrooms to, to be used to interfere with an election That's and right. to deny Trump and other defendants their due process rights. This is very, very important. And we'll see what the Trump attorneys do um, after I'm sure they're meeting. They got a lot on their plate. And it's a pleasure to have you on America's Newsroom. Thank you. OK, guys. So you just heard it. They said due process. That's exact. Mark Levine, I, I like him. He brings the heat. I saw his book in the background back there. And I think that's going to be another book. I'm just going to go ahead and order because he brings the heat. I watch his show. I also like um, Futures um, with Maria. She she is on and they come with it. But OK, so that's what I just read. Didn't I say it just said that in the, and that's in the Fifth Amendment without due process of law. So they and that's just at the end of the sentence. But that's that's the key word here. Due process. He's not he's not getting due process. So, guys, give me some comments. Let's engage. Let's talk about this. And, you know, many of you. So if, if you I just want to go ahead and, and prerequisite with this. I read most of my comments. But if you come in crazy, I, I don't even entertain you. I used to go back and forth with people like that. But first of all, you make yourself look real crazy because you don't do your homework. You just want to talk out the side of your neck off your emotions. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. And if it's too stupid, I'm going to block your tail. So I want to engage with the people who don't know and want to learn more. Or you can know and have a difference of opinion. Let's still engage. If you know and you want to talk more and you want to put me on to some information, please share. Please do, because I'm still learning. But I'm not afraid to be vocal about it. I'm not afraid to think for myself and do more research and share what I learn and find with you, because that's what it's all about. Helping and supporting each other because we are in a dire crisis right now in this country. I don't care what you say. We're in a dire crisis. It's so plain and blatant to see that these crooks are still running the, running the president, running this country. They're still in office. And it's just being smoothed over. It's just being smoothed over. And yet you see the, the president who really had our country at heart. Many people may not, may not, you don't have to like him as a person. I don't have anything personally. I don't have any personal dislikes. There are some things that I felt like he could have done a little different when he was in office. But there are more, more wins than losses, boo. More wins than losses. And that's going to be another video. So I definitely want you to tap into that one. But we have to make our decisions and judgments based off of facts, not fiction. That's it. That's it. Pull your, put your emotions to the side. Put your emotions to the side and go back and look at the facts. The facts that support the wins that he had and everything that he did properly in office. There were some things he could have done a little different. But how did, our, how did we fare overall as a country when he was in office is the question. Thank you. All right, guys. Love you. Appreciate all of your support. Thank you. Let's tap in. Let's have a great conversation. And the links for, I don't really have any um, links. This is the, I mean, the amendments of the Constitution. This is uh, the United States. I'm sorry. This is the Constitution of the United States. This is what this document is. So you have to go and pull this up yourself. You can go and find it. Also, what I read for about the grand jury law that's on there, the Fifth Amendment. Um, came from the Constitution and the anti-suit junction. I'm going to be able to, I can text these um, and put this in the description below. So you can do read and, and dive in. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, doing your research. Don't forget to share this video. I appreciate you. See you on the next episode of Snap Political.